In this video, we finally make it to Las Vegas, where we explored the Vegas Strip for two nights before driving west through Death Valley, stopping along the way to see the almost abandoned roadside attractions before reaching the coast of Northern California. We're Paul and Julia, and like most millennials, we love to travel. <music> This trip, we flew out of DC, landing in Phoenix, Arizona, where we spent a week driving 1,200 miles ending in San Francisco. Leaving the Hoover Dam, it's roughly a 30 minute drive to reach Las Vegas, where we stopped to try In and Out for the first time. We also spotted this right hand drive Mark IV Supra. In and Out was good, but how is this considered a grilled cheese? Like seriously. Okay, quick rundown of Las Vegas. The population of the metro area is almost 3 million as of 2024 and has over tripled its population since 1990. The Vegas Strip is just 4.2 miles long and attracts roughly 29 million visitors every year. We stayed on the 31st floor of the Marriott Grand Chateau located directly across from Planet Hollywood overlooking the airport. With all the things to do and see, Las Vegas can be a little overwhelming, so we made sure to set minor goals each night, with our first one being the Bellagio Fountain. The fountain is the pinnacle of water shows, with over 1,200 water nozzles and almost 4,800 lights. The show plays an array of popular music, and we got there just in time for the Beatles. Not even ashamed to admit, I went through a Beatles phase in high school, so this was extra exciting. The Bellagio Fountain had a total price tag of $40 million and seemed to be doing its job quite well as the hotel and casino was far more crowded than any other place we went. Once inside, the lobby opens up to a glass sculpture across the ceiling known as Fiori di Como. Completed in 1998 with a cost of $10 million, the sculpture is a compilation of 2,000 hand-blown blossoms that have a total weight of roughly 40,000 pounds. Passing straight through the lobby, we entered into the botanical garden that showcases thousands of plants and flowers in many intricate displays complete with running water and all the smells you would expect when walking through an actual garden outside, just with a few thousand extra people. After we wandered through the casino, we found ourselves next door at Caesar's Palace. As we explored, we started to focus on finding dinner, and that's when we found it. Located just outside, Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen. We have seen most every season, so we were pretty excited, but after a long day, we decided to grab some takeout close by and head back to our hotel for the night. We had heard of the Cake Boss vending machines and our curiosity was getting the better of us. So on day two, we woke up with the sole mission of getting that cake. 
we had to go to two different machines before finally finding a working one inside Paris. We had heard that these machines are a scam but had to try it for ourselves. We paid $8 per slice, which seems absurd for some old cake, but the chocolate one was actually quite good. Definitely better than the takeout from the night before. But because of our poor diet decisions, we spent the afternoon swimming before going back out as the sun set. Walking south down the strip, we started off in New York, New York before cutting through Excalibur. We went pretty quickly through both because we were excited to check out the cursed hotel, the Luxor. There have been an abnormally large amount of tragic accidents and paranormal reports from the Luxor, and the first example was before it was even completed. During the construction of the Luxor, seven workers died due to the dangerous 39 degree angle of the pyramid. Once the hotel was open, it started to sink on one corner. Guests have often reported seeing dark figures roaming the hotel, as well as waking up feeling like they were being choked. There are quite a few more ominous examples of the curse, but let's get into the theories. From the outside, we could already see the subject of the first curse theory. The Luxor is being guarded by a single sphinx, whereas the Great Pyramid of Giza that the Luxor was modeled after was originally guarded by two sphinx to ward off the evil spirits. We aren't really sold on this theory, but the next theory is centered around King Tut himself. The Luxor has various artifacts on display from King Tut's tomb hidden behind a $30 ticket price. However, all of the artifacts are replicas and are not the real deal, so this theory falls apart as well. If you are into these kinds of mysteries, then the next theory will make the most sense. The Luxor has over 250 authentic artifacts recovered from the wreck of the Titanic, an unsinkable ship that sank on her maiden voyage. Was there a cursed mummy on board? Did it sink because it was not christened before sailing? We could do a whole video on the Luxor and that would take us down a deep rabbit hole. But whatever curse the Luxor might have, we had a blast exploring the world's third largest pyramid. And by the time we left, our phones were almost dead. Must have been all that paranormal activity. We took the monorail to Mandalay Bay before heading back to the hotel to get an early start on the morning. Thanks so much for watching. We had a blast in Las Vegas. If you enjoyed this video, Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss us exploring some lesser known places in the Mojave Desert on our way to the California coast.